and amen. If you want to turn in your scriptures or follow along on overhead, I'm, I'll start reading this morning uh, from Exodus chapter number 16. Exodus chapter number 16 this morning. I'll read uh, two verses, uh, verse 14 and 15, and then skip down to 35. But the Bible said uh, out of the King James Version this morning, and when the dew that lay was gone up, Behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited, they did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. The text that I read to you comes from a time period after the deliverance of God's people, and most of you know that. They were delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. They traveled into the wilderness, what should have been a three-day journey, ended up lasting 40 years. Their deliverance came by the power of God, by divine presence, and through God's guidance, they, the children of Israel, walked out of Egypt. The Scripture says that the Lord went before them by day in a cloud and by night in a pillar of fire. Can I just say, this ain't my message this morning, but can I tell you that this world needs a cloud and they need the fire? Can I tell you that the church today, if there's ever been anything that we need, we need a directive. In the family of God, we need something to guide us. And can I preach to you today, we still got a God that delivers. Whew, I don't care what your Pharaoh looks like today. And I don't care how long you may have been in bondage. I want to tell you something, you've got a God that's still able to deliver you and break the chains. That may have, well I'm fixed to preach in here, there may be somebody here today. That feel like you don't have a way out. Can I tell you, there's still a cloud. There's still a fire that can lead you. There's still a God that can break the chains that hold you in bondage today. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen because you know that the same fire, the same cloud, the same God is the same God that we're serving today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it don't matter how long we live. If the Lord tears another hundred years, He'll still be God. And He'll still be able to break chains. Whoop! Not only, listen, this is just for good measure, not only did He deliver them, He delivered them with an offering. Somebody say amen. Anybody ready for an offering? I'm ready for what, the God, what God's got to give us. Say amen. After their deliverance, the Lord led them. He went before them by day in a cloud and at night in a pillar of fire. During that 40-year span of time in the wilderness, the presence and the guidance of God never left them. Exodus 12, 35-37 said, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. Listen. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. It's a story of God doing what you'd expect God to do for His children. Somebody say amen. 430 years of slavery changes to freedom because God's redeeming grace brought them out. Can I get a witness in this place today of the redeeming grace of God? The years that you spent wasting your time, God is still in the business of redeeming the time and restoring what the canker worm and the locust has eaten. Somebody help me preach today. If you know about a God that changes what you were doing and makes everything all brand new for you when He redeems you. Whoop. How many of you are glad you've been redeemed? Say amen. How many of you glad you're walking on new ground today? Somebody help me preach in here. Am I the only one that feels what I'm saying today? God is in the business of changing your direction and making things new for you. Praise the Lord. Y'all smile at me real big. Shake your head like this. I believe it. 
Come on, I believe it. I believe God's still in the redeeming business. Hallelujah to His name. I'll shout by myself. Y'all don't help me. I believe He's in the redeeming business. I believe He's still able to take old Pharaoh and make him say, I thought I was going to hold on, but I believe I'll turn him loose now. <laughs> I thought I had a good hold on, but I believe I'm going to turn him loose. Hey, 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 I'll tell you something. The devil still ain't the winner. He thinks he's got us. I'll tell you something. He ain't got us. God's got us. God's our deliverer today. Say amen, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. 430 years. Pharaoh's grinning, and all of a sudden, he said, I believe I'll turn them loose. That's grace, y'all. That's power. That's a God thing. And those kind of occurrences are still possible right now. 2021, God's still able. Somebody, give him praise. Give him a good hand clap of praise because you believe that. No, yeah, no, yeah, you, you ain't clapping good. If you're still bound, you'll clap better now. If you need deliverance, you clap better now. If you need freedom, you come on, I'm telling you the truth. If you need him, you clap better now. Hallelujah to God. He's still a delivering God. He's still able. Hey! From slavery, God will glory to God. From slavery to freedom. My Lord. From slavery and bondage in Egypt to freedom in the wilderness. Freedom. Somebody say amen. Freedom. Freedom can sometimes cause a cry of fear rather than faith because freedom leads you into the wilderness. For sure, in the wilderness there are many opportunities for God to perform miracles. And one of the miracles, however, needed in the wilderness could be because you ain't got nothing to eat. What happens sometimes is that the lack, sometimes when we're brought out of bondage, we spend a period of time in the wilderness, and because of lack, we cry out in fear instead of faith. If you'll remember, the whole congregation murmured against Moses. Now listen, they've been mixing mud and making bricks, plus gathering straw. The taskmasters had made things worse on them, increased their burden. They'd been doing that for years. And they was complaining about having to make bricks and serving the Egyptians. So now God delivers them, Sister Beverly, and brings them out of Egyptian bondage. And when they first get into freedom, it ain't long till they're already griping and complaining and belly aching about what they ain't got instead of what they do have. Woo. How many of you know when it gets just right, you'll thank God don't matter what happens. Listen, y'all. It's... Y'all gonna, y'all, gonna, y'all gonna love me when I get through saying this? Quit grumbling. Everybody stop, turn your head up toward heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, do it again. Look up and say, thank you, Jesus. Woo! Look up again and say, thank you, Lord. I'm not in bondage anymore. Thank you, Lord. Things ain't perfect, but it's better than being in bondage again. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, folks. And the children of Israel, Exodus 16, the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God, we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full, for you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And we're talking about the same folks that watched as they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground, turned around and watched as the Egyptian army came after them and the waters fell upon them and drowned them all. They're the same folks that right now said, I wish I'd have stayed in Egypt, at least in Egypt. I had something to eat. Sometimes.
times, what God brings us through is to help us understand that the blessing still comes from Him. The blessing still comes from Him. Yet we know, even though they said this, we know that even though they're grumbling, griping, complaining, God provided a miracle and supplied manna in spite of their grumbling. And if we're not careful, we will not recognize in our everyday life the miracle that God is performing for us. We just read that they thought it better. It's better. We, we stood a state in Egypt by the flesh. We lived, we sitting by the fire eating something every night. They wish they'd have stayed in Egypt while at the same time, at the same time, they're beholding the miracles of God and toting an offering that God had given them before they left. They held the comfort of devils, the devil's seasonal pleasures in higher regard than the miracle of deliverance. And we're guilty. We like to think we're not guilty, but we're, listen, let's tell it like, we're like hogs eating apples. Possum under a cement tree. We just keep eating. Forget to look up. Y'all ain't helping me preach much. We, we are. We, we live in a land of plenty. Thank God. But don't let the land of plenty make you forget where the plenty is coming from. Say amen. How many of you got any money in your pocket? I ain't trying to embarrass nobody. I ain't got a whole lot of money. I got something to rub together in my pocket. If I wanted to go get a Coca-Cola, I can go get a Coca-Cola. When I get home, I'm going to have something. To... Y'all ain't helping me good. And sometimes we get in this old wagon rutted pity party and we think we got it so bad. You better wise up, stand up, thank God for what you got because if it hadn't been for God, you wouldn't have none of what you got right now. Say amen, everybody. Hallelujah to God. They, they, they were wishing for the flesh pots of Egypt more than the miracles that God was working for them. Why did God deliver? Why did He send manna? Why did He bless this griping bunch of people? He blessed them and He continued to lead and he continued to feed a group of people with such attitude problems. Why in the world would he do that? Why in the world would he do that? Because he made a covenant with Abraham. <laughs> and when God makes a covenant, it's not validated by your signature or by my signature or by your well wishes or your good intentions or what little part you might play in the covenant. You know what validates the covenant? It's Jehovah God. It's Jehovah's name attached to the covenant. The covenant is what makes the difference. Come on, somebody. Anybody else besides your pastor realize that we're in covenant with God Himself today? And because we're in covenant with Him, I don't care what happens, I'm still going to be in heaven one day. Say amen, everybody. Say amen again. Just for the devil's sake, say amen real loud. Amen. How many of you know you're going to heaven? Because you're in covenant. How many of you know He brought you out? Because you're in covenant with Him. Hallelujah. Listen, His name. His name meant something to Him. He made a covenant with Abraham and through a generational inheritance, God, who cannot lie, Performed his word to preserve his own reputation. His name means something. Aren't you glad he said he would? Are you happy that he does what he says he'll do? He's a God. Come on, y'all. He's a God that cannot fail. Turn around, and give your neighbor a high five, and say, He will not fail you. Somebody said, Well, I ain't seen the blessing yet. I'll just tell you right now, it ain't happened for me. Well, it might be your stinking attitude. Some people go, I, listen, I've had to catch myself. I've had the attitude. Well, why things ain't working out for me? Huh? Why is everybody out to get me? Everybody's out to get me. They don't like me. Everybody's out to get me. Everybody's mad at me. Everybody don't like me. I don't know why they don't like me. I like other people. They don't like me. 
I'm talking because y'all have heard that conversation before, haven't you? I'm telling you. <laughs> it don't matter what you say. It don't matter what you do. If you'll hang on long enough, God's going to be God on the other side of what you're going through. God ain't never failed nobody. He ain't going to fail me and you. Y'all know I'm preaching right today. He's God. <laughs> I said He's God. Yeah. Cannot fail. He's God. If you look up the, the, the descriptions of God in the Scriptures, it's Elohim, Creator. Turn around and tell somebody He made you. He's Adonai, Master. He's in charge, y'all. He's Jireh. I thought I'd get a big amen right there. I said he's Jaira. He's our provider. He's Rafa. Our healer. He's Shalom. Peace, come on. I like interactive preaching. He's Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. He's Shalom. He's our peace. How many of you know him to be that in your life? You've probably heard these preach before. But there's three titles I looked up this morning before I got down here to preach. I looked them up in my office. I'd, I'd had some of this planned, but this come fresh this morning. I looked up three titles that you don't normally hear about God. He's Elohim, you, our God. I'm going to run around this church outside. I'm going to go outside and run. He's Elohim, you. He's our God. Turn around and high five somebody and say, He's ours. Come on, y'all. He's Elohika. He's thy God. In other words, He's your God. Come on. He's Elohe. He's my God. Come on here. He's, he's our God. He's your God. And He's my God. Somebody ought to help me preach in here. Do you know what that means? That means let Pharaoh blow all he wants to blow. Let Pharaoh do what he wants. Let the devil say what he wants to say. But God's going to be God when it's all said and done. His name. The two songs he sung confirm my message this morning. Talking about the name. The first two songs. His name means something to him. His name. The reputation of his name. And obviously, it means something to us. Our name, the reputation attached to our name should mean something. Come on, y'all. Now listen. How many of you here today like your name? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians 3, 14, and 15. For, for, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. How many of you like your name? We're named after Him. Y'all hear me? That means something. Names. Names. Do you like yours? In the natural, in the natural, I don't like mine much. In the natural, I'd change my name if I had the opportunity. It didn't cost no money. <laughs> Anybody got a name? Listen, there's, there's one thing really good about being named Cates. Don't nobody ever forget it. There's another thing really bad about being named Cates. They don't nobody ever forget it. If I had an opportunity, I'd change my name. Now, hey, hey, listen. Every time, I, every time me and Beverly goes to the restaurant, I, they said, can I have a name for your order? I said, yeah, Chuck. <laughs> so either Chuck or Beverly one. I'm going to start using Beauregard, I think. It's an unusual name. It's an unusual name. People have some crazy names. You know what? My daddy's name was Thesty. T-H-E-S-T-Y. Thesty. I come from a long line of people. Kooky names. I, I, I was mad about it, so I named Chris. Christopher Cates. <laughs> One non-believing Christian family <laughs> were so in. in Enthused about being atheist, they named their daughter Atheist Evolution. True story. Bob Geldof, one-time lead singer for the Boomtown Rats, 
and a political activist and his wife thought they'd be creative and they named one of their daughters Peaches, Honey Blossom, Charlotte, Angel, Vanessa. You can look it up. She says she hates ridiculous names. Oh yeah, her big sister's name is Fifi Trixie Bell. I'm serious. While her two younger sisters are Pixie and listen to this one, Heavenly Hirani Tiger Lily. Rockstar, <laughs> Rockstar David Boy called his son Zoe, but Zoe didn't like that, so he changed the name to Duncan. Keith Richards of the Rolling Stone named his daughter Dandelion. She tells everybody her name is Angela. Famous chef Jamie Oliver and his wife Jules have two daughters named Poppy Honey and Daisy Boo. Can you believe that? Jerry Seinfeld named his kid Shepherd. I don't know if it was a girl or a boy. I didn't look. <clears throat> one couple named one of their kids together. No, not, not describing. That's the name, together. <clears throat> My point again is that names are important. They can be more or less important depending on if you're the one with a strange name or when you are the one with a strange name. Names are important in the Bible. Some people like we know as Sarah was Sarai, Abram, who we know as Abraham, and Simon, whose names were changed to indicate something significant happened in their life. A God moment. My middle name, if you think Kate's is strange, my middle name is Ephraim. I accused Mama of being mad at me when she named me. But later on, if you don't think names mean something, I, later on we started a a non-profit organization for our mission work. And one of the sisters here at church, Reba, brought me a little slip of paper one day and said she looked up Ephraim in the Hebrew and it means fruitful in the land of affliction. So now Ephraim missions is because of a name that I hated. And I thought, how many times I must have... Ephraim come from my daddy. My daddy was thirsty Ephraim. Don't feel so sorry for me. Feel sorry for him. He was thirsty. I thought how many times I hurt mom and daddy's feelings by saying how much I disliked my name when I was a kid. Listen, in 1 Samuel 25, 25, Abigail told King David in my paraphrase, she said, my husband's name is fool because that's what he is. But don't we know this morning that the most significant name of all is the name of Jesus Christ our Lord? Somebody help me praise Him because He's the one that saved you. When nobody else could save you. He's the one that brought you out of bondage when nobody else could bring you out of bondage. Come on, y'all. Help me praise Him. If you're glad that you know the name that is above every other name, He's the one that changed your whole entire world. Say amen, everybody. Say amen. At the name of Jesus, devils tremble. Help me say it, everybody. Jesus. Come on, say it again. Jesus, devils, they're, they're shaking now. If, you, if you're saying that with the blood applied to your life, it makes them go to quivering. Come on, say amen. Say it again. Say Jesus. 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 The devil's having a nervous breakdown because you realize that you've got a name attached to your name today that changes everything in your world. Jesus. Jesus. we got something to be proud of and thankful for our name. There's one name that makes it all worth it. Paul wrote that it's your name too. Everybody is named after that name. I'll repeat what I said before. Aren't you thankful? I've said it before at this church, not this morning. Aren't you thankful for God's tender mercies? Aren't you thankful for His name? God's favor, goodness, and kindness is extended to you and me today. Somebody say amen. amen. I thought about today the words of Job. I'm talking about coming out of, out of the wilderness, folks, out of bondage, maybe into the wilderness for a while, but God delivering you. How many of you know He does a good job when He delivers you? I thought about the words of Job. Job said that God was gracious and delivers from the pit. Can anybody relate to the pit? He delivers from it. Job went on to say in Job chapter number 33, he went on to say that he found a ransom. A ransom. 
God paid a ransom. That when people pray, God will be favorable to them and give them His righteousness. How many of you know, ain't none of us got no righteousness of our own. But by the grace of God and the delivering power of Jesus Christ, we've all been made righteous. Then in Psalm 33 and 29, he said, Lo, these things worketh God oftentimes with man. I want you to stand with me, everybody. I want you to bow your heads for about 30 seconds. I don't want you to do anything but just thank God for delivering you. Come on, I want you to thank Him because your name and His name are attached. Come on, be sincere. Be sincere and thank God for what He's done for you. Thank Him because He said He'd give His life for ours, and He did. For His name's sake. For His name's sake. Come on, thank Him and praise Him, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 23 says He's our shepherd. Jehovah Rohi. The Lord, our shepherd. And I want to close this morning. I want to tell somebody in this building. I want, I want every, over in the corner over there, I want everybody in this building, listen to me. The shepherd will take care of his sheep. You hear me? He'll take care of his sheep. And sometimes sheep have to be worked on. They have to be healed, they have to be delivered out of danger they have to be corrected so they don't go the wrong place but how many of you know the shepherd will take care of his sheep sometimes the shepherd has to shear the sheep but every time the shepherd will take care of his sheep because the shepherd doesn't have a reputation of letting his sheep do what they shouldn't do. The shepherd will take care of his sheep because, he's, because he is the great shepherd. Father, I bless you today. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you because... Our name is attached to your name. And you care about names. You know our name. And our cry has awoken you. God, I pray that people in this building, if there's somebody in here today that needed to know that their name is important. <laughs> their name is important enough for you to put it on yourself. Write their names on your own person. The Lord knows them that are His. And the foundation of God stands sure having that inscription on it. God, we thank You for Your promises. We thank You, Lord, because of what You mean to us and what we mean to You. Father, I'll be careful to praise You for what You do in the remainder of this service. If there's anybody in this building right now that the Spirit of God has restored hope in you and let you know, reassured you that He knows your name and you need to pray. There's something you need to cry out to God about this morning. I give you an opportunity to come to this altar right now and pray. Give God praise. Get restored. Get rededicated. Whatever you need to do. For God to reassure you that your name is important to Him. If not, everybody look at Pastor Cates. On the count of three, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say your name and then say Jesus after it because just as sure as those words come out of your mouth, you are connected with Him. And if you're not saved today and the blood had not been applied to your life, you can be and that name can be attached to your name. 
And you can walk out of here proud to be called by the name of Christ. On the count of three, say your name and then attach Jesus to it. One, two, three. Kate's Jesus. Realize what that means today when you leave here. Realize what that means today.